Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the number one best-selling author in the world, Mr. Matt's Best. I couldn't hear a ham horn, but I felt like there was. <laughs> oh, there is. You know there's a fucking ham horn in here, my, my dude. Of course. You, you got to come in strong. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm a guest on the show now, which is a weird vibe, but I, I kind of like it. You that, know? that is not true, no. Matt. There is always a seat for you whenever you want to give up uh, you know, a multi-million dollar coffee company that doesn't have a board of directors. Come on back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm here, because I love you. <laughs> I think still you should just find somebody on the street and say, here are all my shares in Black Rifle. and Because right. what I'm really meant to do is be on a podcast with my best friends forever. Right, and I totally agree with that. And the, the one problem is the only reason I'm on the board of directors is because I have high cheekbones. I literally <laughs> contribute nothing intellectually or business-wise. So no, it's funny though. Somebody said, "Look, Matt's the face of the, of, of the brand." I get it, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." And uh, the you should see what he does on the weekends in a fucking four by four. Like, you got to keep that face good, <laughs> my man. Hey, I, I traded in my uh, my razor, so I don't have that one anymore. I'm gonna go get a four seater. I'm gonna dad it down a little bit after you know um, driving too fast in that thing. So the razor is gone. It's all, like we're out of there with the razor. Yeah, I, I traded it in. Oh, I'm going to get like a four-seater so I can go down take the pups down to the river and, you know, play some music. It's a little more, a little more chill. I don't need a race car. Good, you know? because I, I want you to look at Kevin Hart's crash photos uh, when, when we get off this podcast. And, and then you tell me how important it is well, to keep it fresh. Not to, not to get serious right off the gate, but, you know, um, there's two tragedies that have happened in the last couple months. A, a buddy of mine here that lives in town. Uh, one of his business partners or employees killed himself on a razor. And then uh, my dad's best friend, uh, his son was, I think, 37, um, died two weeks ago um, and flipped a razor and killed himself. So I'm just like, whew, it only, you know, it only takes one. So it, really unfortunate for them and their families. And I wish them the best. But, yeah, I, I don't really want to be one of the statistics. Yeah. I know me. Shit, man. Um, man. Well, speaking of statistics, you are number one in the world. Thank you for my hey. service is number one, my man. Crazy shit, right? Fucking crazy shit. Really crazy. And, and look, um, we wanted to chat about it today. You know, not only did you, you want to thank the Drinking Bros community and all the listeners and all that yeah, stuff. Absolutely. Um, but, absolutely. But we also kind of wanted to explain what happened. We briefly explained it on uh, the news show on Thursday. Uh, because nice. it, 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 it was odd, right? New York Times bestseller list came out first. And you were number five. And I had told you, it was right. like... I don't think that's right, man. Just based on the sales and the way things were tracking on Amazon, I was like, I could maybe see that we were number two. And yeah, then we you, were thinking that number one was going to be somewhere around 30,000, and that's right where you were. Yeah. So it was like, then you showed up at what, 28 and change? It's like, oh, yeah, he's number one for sure. Maybe number two, but not number five. There's no fucking way. Well, not to be Ross Adamas here, but I did call that on the phone. I said, I think we're going to be four and politically infused whatever i knew that we weren't going to beat michelle obama on the new york times and then educated is just like crushing the game right now even even their sales aren't but for whatever reason so i was like we'll, we'll probably sit around four just based off of politics but five hit you know and i'm not greedy man i'm so thankful to be a new york times bestseller i'm probably the dumbest guy to be on there um and really the drinking bros they contributed so much to the success of this book as far as sharing and tagging and just supporting it from day one i mean three fucking years ago so uh, no qualms about that whatsoever. It's pretty rad to have the, the new books getting printed with New York Times bestseller. But yes, the, the process in which that they um, rank things are hyper subjective and obviously based off of the sales velocities and then you kind of combine them and quantify them, you realize we, we crushed everybody by like threefold. Yeah. And, and that's fine. So I'm curious to see what next week lands, like if we'll even be on the list because sales are keeping decent. But you know, all those pre-sales contribute to that first week release and they do um, rank those a little bit lower, I heard. And, and who knows, man, it is what it is, but at least they let us on the list. I mean, that would have been the world's most hilarious transgression if they didn't even put us on the fucking list. Yeah, and, and the, the reason I talked about it on Thursday's show is everybody, I, I feel like everybody was with us. Like this felt like a group effort, right? All the listeners, uh, everybody in the Drinking Bros community, Everybody was pushing to get you to number one. And the reason I said something was I wanted to let the audience know that you did it. You actually did make it no, number they, one. 
They, they did. They did. And I, and I can't, I'm so humbled and thankful for it. And I'm not just trying to be that guy, but seriously, like it, it wouldn't have never happened. You know, my social media only goes so far and people aren't personally invested in the project and sharing it. And then let alone uh, that first release day, people were charging through the book the first day and promoting mm -hmm. it and posting it everywhere and saying like, this is a 10 out of 10 read. So dude, to you guys, thank you so fucking much. Um, you know, we don't get anything extra for being a New York Times bestseller list, but we do get that accolade for the rest of our lives. So that's pretty rad. And thank you so much. Yeah. And, and I do want to point that out. I'm glad you brought that up because financially, there, there is, we don't get anything for being on the New York Times bestseller list. We just wanted to have that on our gravestone, essentially, um, forever. So that way, you know, when the plane goes down, as we try to get out of Dorian, whatever the fuck's going to happen yeah, in yeah. a couple of days, at least if I die with Dan... Dan will be like, and, you know, 186 passengers, where it'll be like New York Times bestseller uh, died, yeah. and then just, they'll, and then they'll be like Dan Hall, yeah, Dan died, <laughs> who's Dan, but then it'll be like Ross Patterson, New York Times, no, New York Times bestseller. bestselling author, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll, they'll put you at like number one or two important New York Times sure bestseller and like, Caitlyn Jenner look alike, Ross Patterson died this afternoon. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, speaking <laughs> about Caitlyn Jenner, man. <laughs> I, oh, fuck it. I'll say it on here. Did not respond to my cameo. So today I think is the last day. What is it? The third? Today? Yeah. 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 Today's the last day. So I, uh, if people read the book in, um, <laughs> dedication, I de dedicated it to my mom and it was a joke that went forever because I, I wrote that with Niels and because I was sitting there like, okay, I want to dedicate the book to my mom. I love my mom. She's freaking awesome and always supported me, but I am kind of crazy. And, you know, it's this kind of childhood joke that she always wanted a daughter and then she got, you know, I'm her third boy. And so we made a joke about Bruce Jenner not transitioning until his late sixties. Um, so I thought it'd be hilarious to hire Caitlyn Jenner on cameo and give me a shout out for the book. And needless to say, I'm sure whoever their manager is Googled my name and was like, Nope. <laughs> so it was worth a shot. Cause I was going to like FaceTime it and edit it in this video, but whatever. Yeah, the funny thing is about the, the dedication is you waited till like the very last second to, to write that. Why was that? I knew you, I knew you wanted to, to, to have it for your mom, but uh, you didn't know whether to take a serious or a comedic tone? No, I wanted it to be funny because it really sets the precedence for what the book's going to be like. Okay, here's a thoughtful message to this mother with sarcasm. And, you know, that's the whole book. So, you know, I did a lot of stuff last minute on that thing. I mean, we changed the title. They're like, you can't change the, the title of this book. And we did it fucking like two weeks before the, the fucking manuscript was locked. And yep. then the, the cover art was like last minute after fucking 600 iterations that we did. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, hey, that's, that's me though. Wait till you got to get, you know, the content is king. You got to make sure it's good. Of course. Of course. And, and, you know, you and I had done a show, I think two weeks before it came out or maybe the week before it came out. We had numerous amounts of drinks, and we were talking about... I was drunk on that show. Yeah. I mean, I'm having a little whiskey right now because it's my day off-ish, but, you know, Yeah, but drunk. you and I were talking, and you were like, man, wh what are you most nervous about? And I was like, this just being well-received and it doing well. Because, you know, the biggest fear was you, you spend three years of your life on something, and then it does nothing, you know? It makes you, you know, like I four just, copies sold. I'm just looking at the fucking bestseller list uh, right now. Super interesting. So this is on New York Times homepage um, on their bestseller for hardcover nonfiction. And the top 10 books, every single one of them has a, a link that says read review, which means somebody from New York Times probably wrote a review of it. Yep. Except for Matt Best book and Mark Levin, who is a com uh, conservative political commentator. Really? Yep. Interesting. Every other one. That is in interesting. The, top 10. the other one I found interesting and that I said on the show on Thursday was your book was also the only book to not receive a review from a major publication. Usually Washington Post or USA Today or somebody reviews the book and they put out a review of it the same way they, they would with a movie. Uh, and with a book of your size, of how many it sold and with it being number one, because it did get number one, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Publishers Weekly, like three other lists. I'm still surprised there is no review of the book, like an actual review. I, of it. I was waiting for it because I've seen a couple of people in our community and they've been super supportive and that's great. But I always know that there's going to probably be like a mild hit article on me just because who I am, like I'm a gun toting, you know, toxic masculinity motherfucker. Uh, so I was like waiting for it to happen. It hasn't happened yet, but we still got time. I'm sure there are going to be something out there like first and foremost, want to thank Matt for his service. Yeah. But, <laughs> and, which is fine. I don't know if you guys saw the review calling me a sociopath. And I thought I fucking was laughing my ass off reading that one. Like compelling, well-written book, but it gives you the insight to what a sociopath is like. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I liked it though. I was like, all right, what are, what are you supposed to do in war, man? Like, that's the reason I wrote the book. Like, it ain't fucking rom- like romantic. It's fucking disgusting and it's fucking dark. Like, it's war. You're taking human lives. Like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, look, you're always going to get some fucking asshole out there who's got their own opinion of your life, you know? I was, dude, I was not mad about it. I just thought it was hilarious that they were like, this guy needs to be in a mental institution. I was like, well, that might be right, but, you know. (laughs) Well, look. But I guarantee, I guarantee I'm nicer than that motherfucker. Like, if they meet and there's an old lady that needs a helping hand across the street, I'll fucking do it and they wouldn't. I guarantee that. Of course, of course. Uh, But look, if it it makes the list again, there's going to be no choice. Somebody's going to have to cover this book, I would think. You would think, but we, we've thought a lot and been really wrong, so it's okay. It's I, I, cool, man. I'm just stoked for it to be out, dude. Like, uh, you know, I, I took a little celebratory uh, week day off yesterday, and I went and shot Dove for opening season with my father, so I got to hang out with my dad and shoot shotguns. So, hey, man, the world's right. It's good. That's awesome, man. So how, how does it feel that your life story is number one in the entire world? That's got to be pretty surreal. It's like when you turn 30 or like 50, I imagine it feels like the same as yesterday. I don't give a fuck about all that stuff. Really, the only thing I truly cared about was the content being well received in the community that I care about. And Mm -hmm. thus far, I've seen just raving reviews and the feedback on my Instagram still is just phenomenal. And that's just, it's just rad that, 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 that that puts me at ease. Like that's, that's what I was worried about. Not what some fucking prick progressive thinks about his fucking sitting on a soapbox in New York, you know? It is funny, though, to disrupt all that shit, to be honest. And it's another notch on the... Drinking bros. The, yeah. Like, fucking well, it, accolades. It yeah, really yeah. is. I mean, like, a fucking $100 million coffee company, a, a podcast that got 7 million downloads last month, everything else, like Jared's fucking The group, movie, the, Range 15, the, the movie, Drinking the, Bros Live. Drinking Bros group that has 105,000 people in it now. Lead Slinger's Whiskey. Yeah, it's fucking I mean, crazy. Dan, Dan, we're essentially an insurgency if you think about it. Oh, like yeah. You have, you have, like, the nation that everybody's like, this is it, liberal media, and then we just come in and, like, well, yeah, you can be liberal, conservative, left, right, brown, pink, yellow, but we just, as long as you're fucking pro-America, you can be part of the team, dude. Yeah, we don't give a shit. Yeah, no, nobody gives a shit, but uh, if somebody sat me down the other day, they were like, man, if you think about all of you guys combined, right, with, with the, essentially the six of us, uh, including Rocco, uh, Range 15, that raised, uh, what, it, broke, it broke a record for... It was the highest grossing independent film of 2016. 2016. And it for, broke a record for the crowdfunding. Yeah, for the movie. crowdfunding in a yeah, day. In a day, It, yeah. it raised all that money in a day. You've had a number one best-selling book in the world. Range 15 ended up being number one on Amazon, number two on iTunes. Mm-hmm. You guys have created a coffee company that's the number one (laughs) e-commerce coffee company in the world. Let's talk about that, Ross. I am somewhat thankful that it didn't, or book didn't hit number two in the bestseller because I was like, man, the oh, yeah. warriors are going to come out of the goddamn second. not second best, dude. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I think you comes. may have had to officially change your name at that point. Yeah. I fucking, I fucking probably would have. I was like, well, there's number five, you know, that I've been second in, but that's all right. Yeah, no, look, you were number one. You in the ain't re- first, you're last. Yeah, yeah, look, number one in the rest of the world and then in actual sales and all that shit. And, and everybody's got the numbers in every publication yeah. now, so it can't be denied you were one. You were definitely not second. But uh, you've got the number one e-commerce coffee company in the world. Um, Rocco is on the Mayans. I mean, fuck, season two starts tomorrow night. Yeah. I mean, look oh, at shit. all yeah. of this shit that has come off of this podcast and relationship over the years, like... It's pretty fucking incredible like to sit back and think about it. Yeah, it's fun, man. I mean, that's what my best advice to people when they ask about success is just surround yourself by people that are motivated, hardworking people that don't fall into the bullshit tub of drama. Like you just sort fucking issues that you have and you move forward and you keep working. And it's, I think to showcase that, like we're all not the most world's intelligent people. We just are hardworking fucking people that wake up every morning like it's Monday and we party every night like it's Saturday usually. And yeah. fucking that, that has somehow created a bunch of success. And yeah. hey, like I think anybody can achieve that. And I, I hope that's the uh, kind of the, the undertone and the inspirational message, message in all of this is like you can fucking do it. Like if I can be a bestseller and I'm a fucking idiot, you, you can do whatever your life's goals are. I like the idea that it's an insurgency too because it's not just – the six of us or whomever else we've worked with. It's like the hundred fucking thousand people in the group. It's yeah. the fucking millions well, of no, people it's, listen it's, to the show. It's, it's everybody, dude. It's like the Donnie O'Malley's and Vet TV who yeah, are making yeah. like yeah. some of the most gnarly fucking edgy macabre content out there. Yeah. But there's a place for that. There's people that absolutely love that content and everybody else in the world will say, you can't fucking make that. I'm like, bro, I mean, if that's helping veterans fucking transition and get past their own shit, like 
mission success, dude. Like disruptive intent. Let's fucking go. Let's be an insurgency. Yeah, and look, Derek Wyda, man, uh, dude, his uh, like all of his shit is fucking hilarious and edgy. I, I just sat down and watched his cooking series with my I, yeah my wife. That's, I the it's my favorite. Biggest crush on Derek. Biggest crush on Derek. <laughs> it's my it's my favorite. And the and the reason why I bring him up is we love Derek more than life itself. He flew out to come and surprise you at a signing. I think what people don't know about Derek, because he, he always comes off as this, like, not arrogant, but, like, very fuck you motherfucker on social. But he's, like, one of the sweetest men I've ever met in my whole entire life. And, what, yeah, when he came out and surprised me at the Fort Hood signing, he walks up, and immediately people are like, oh, my God, Derek, why can I get a photo signature? And Derek looks at me and goes, hey, hey man, I, I can go, like, walk that way because I don't want it. This is your day. I want your day to be okay. I'm like, that's what? Not, that's no, not a bad impression like, of Derek, actually. <laughs> yeah. What's, it? What's that, was, that? That was a pretty good impression of Derek, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but then he, like, it was awesome. I was like, dude, yeah, sign fucking books. So people got, like, they were, uh, he was signing all, like, the pictures of us hanging off the little bird from years back. And I was like, that's awesome, man. I, I love Derek. Yeah, uh, that was really cool to see, man. Um, and if you want, I'm going to give a shameless plug for Derek. He, check out his social. It's Derek Wyda ev- everywhere, but he has, it's free, and you can go on. And he does personal, like, fitness stuff. I think he's got, quite a few thousand members and he, he does training regiments for everybody. So yeah, he's like, got a private Facebook group now that does yep. specifically like he's laying out fucking training programs for people and shit like that. He answers all your questions and stuff. I, I don't know the name. I, actually, let me find it out right quick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah look up the name of it so we can tell the audience. Um, I saw, but, I saw him talking about it on Instagram. It looks awesome. Yeah. It's a great resource. Cause I know a lot of people are like, well, how do you work out? What's your regiment? And like in Derek, like he goes from like being a fucking, thick power lifter to a ripped fucking bodybuilder in like eight weeks because the dude just knows how to do it so check it out it's Fuck called around. the wider group wider group there's there twenty four thousand people in there holy shit holy shit already yeah. yep and he started it like a couple months ago i think maybe God damn it, i don't even man. know my man he he's jacked man i saw the picture of him yesterday it is fucking insane how jacked that guy is right now i do want to apologize to derek because we played these fucking like hipster fucks and they were really nice in austin after the signing in uh giant jenga and dude (laughs) i've never seen a whole entire bar there was like club music on it was the hotel bar and we didn't know but we're down there playing jenga the whole entire bar was staring at us we were sitting we're standing on like the the benches to get to the top and i i lost which was unlike me (laughs) but it, it, it was like fucking seven feet tall i have a fucking photo of it It was hilarious but good times that's awesome, and he and he won. No, no, no. Derek and I were on a team, and I let him down. So. Ah, you okay? So, well, look, it, it, you're, but I did the whole like manly thing, like "fuck you." My wife's hotter, and I'll beat your ass when I walk. No, I didn't say that. Yeah, <laughs> you, you walked away. There's nothing like yeah. playing hipsters and Jenga and, lar- and large man's. They Jenga. get a little extra balance out of their mustache. I think they do. They do. That's all they do. They drink craft beer and play Jenga and fucking cornhole. So I'm like, let's it, do like a competitive sport that requires athleticism. Dude, that, so that's what happened to me. I'm at, a, I'm at a craft beer place the other night. I was with Dan. You want to talk about letting, letting a team down. Um, <laughs> I, got beat, I got beat by a, a hippie and his, and his lady because I had Dan as my teammate in cornhole who's absolutely horrible at that game and probably most sports. Um, so I will, I will dominate you in all sports except for stupid fucking frat boy bar sports. No, not in a million years. Yep. Um, so I grabbed this guy, Matt, and because I, I was pissed off about it. You and I get the same level of angry about losing anything. And so I grabbed yeah. this guy and I just said, hey, man, how about you and I go one on one and just find out who's the best? You know, because I got <laughs> I got saddled with a teammate that, that really brung, brung me down. And uh, and I f- and he goes, oh, you, you want to play for a beer? Like that was the, the, the most glorious prize Ooh. of all time. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we'll play for a fucking beer. And then I ended up beating him and he walks over to me real solemnly and he's like, uh, what kind of beer do you want? And I was like, you know what, man? I didn't even want the fucking beer. I just wanted to, to let you know that I'm better than you. And that was it. And I walked away. <laughs> I would have taken the beer. I would have been like, what's the most expensive IPA on the fucking bar list? And let's go. Dude, you know who's a sleeper? My fucking wife, man. Because every time I like reluctantly and I do that as an act, I'm like, ah, yeah, I'll just play with my wife. And you guys, you guys can play against us. She fucking, she'll ring like threes four times in a row with one fucking play. She is on cornhole. Really? Savage. Oh, fucking savage. What was and her? We can't play. We can't play each other because we'll get a, we'll get a divorce. Like, we'll get a divorce. <laughs> you you got to get some set up in the backyard because we're coming I, yeah, out there. I, I have it. Oh, I you do, it. dude. Yeah, we'll be there. Oh, yeah. What the twenty eighth through the thirtieth? Yeah, or something we'll be like there that? in like 
three weeks. So let's let's have let's come on down. Let's do it and go Facebook Live with it and see who the best of the of the best is. Are you good at it? Ah, uh, you know, I dabble. Okay, I, I, I dabble <laughs> as well. I dabble as well. So I dabble in you know ski ball too. Ross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perhaps we'll we'll put something on it then, my man. We should. We should. We have to give up the New York Times bestseller author accreditation. Whoever, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Those stakes are way too high. Well, well, here's the thing. If we called them back, they probably don't even know. You know, the New York Times, huh? What book? Oh no, 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 what no. Book? Well, Michelle oh, Obama's still number two with 8,200 copies sold. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck that thirty thousand. Yeah, go ahead and take your thirty thousand away. We're taking. Dude, the audio book has been crushing it too. That, that's uh, it's really cool to see. And again, this is just a way of not bragging, but saying thank you guys. Was the feedback from the audio book uh, as far as me narrating it? And uh, there was one really, really nice five star in there, and it was like talking about how all authors suck when it comes to narrating, and they it's reluctantly true. bought it. And then they're like, holy shit, it's a. It's hard for me to listen to in a couple parts I don't like. Like I did a Middle Eastern accent at one point, didn't like that one. For uh, gauche. But, for gauche, yeah. No, I don't mind the gauche one. It was like doing the call out stuff in the Bremen Barraza chapter ah, because yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like it, it didn't it didn't fit in the serious tone that I wanted to come across and I listened, I had to turn it off the other day because I've only listened to like four of the chapters and I was like, ah but it seems everybody else loves it. So I'm, I'm glad that they can see it in the tone and the, and the feeling and the vibe that uh, we wrote into the stories that I lived. So Yeah, and you, you crushed it. Um, and, but, and I will say this, for, for the audience at home, you know, for Matt that's, that said he didn't like a couple of his line readings for things, they also didn't give you a lot of time. That was the shortest amount of time I've ever seen anybody make someone read a book in. I mean, it was fucking crazy. Well, and the weird part too, there were zero pickups. So going into this thing and we rushed it because we wanted to shop the audiobook for some media, mm -hmm. um, some earned media, but yeah, they, they didn't do any pickups. Cause normally like in a movie, like anybody that's done a film, you go back and you do some like, uh, ADR, you know, ADR yeah. lines and you, and you read some shit that you fucked up none. And so I was like, there's no way I nailed everything on the first try. But, hey, it's been received so well. Thank you guys so much. Like, that's fucking kick ass. It has, yeah. And, and by the way, that guy was right. If you go back and listen to other authors read their own shit, um, the first one I can remember was Tucker Max. And Tucker just loved the guy, but he definitely should not have read his own book. He should have hired the British guy for that one. <laughs> Did I uh, send you that photo? Tucker Max uh, posted on Instagram, or I think Facebook on someone's post and said uh, he loved the book title. And I was like, oh, look at that. Full yeah. circle. I remember reading your book back in 2000 and like fucking seven. Yeah, that look, that was the one that set it off for dudes. And, and again, on that, that show that we did a couple of weeks ago, that's, that's what we had kind of said of like, I feel like once every decade, there's a book for dudes that ab absolutely destroys. And uh, I feel like it's yours for this decade. I feel like it was Tucker's for that one where, uh, you know, everybody was reading it, laughing at it and sharing it over and over again. Uh, and your audiobook sales have been monstrous. I mean, just absolutely monstrous. My favorite part in all of this is I've seen so many people like, I haven't read a book in 20 years, but fuck it, I'm reading this one. I'm like, wow, well, I'm glad. Let's get you back into reading. You know, knowledge is king, man. It <laughs> is. Let's go. It is. Well, <laughs> you, you forget how much you miss reading until you read a great book. The problem so is. So fair. Yep. The problem is most. Not a lot of great. No. Uh, you know, there's, there's a handful that I could name over the last couple of years where I'm like, ah, I really like this or this or this. But usually, you know, most of publishing is catered toward young adult or for women. So, you know, there's a lot of fucking... what's the, what's the last book you read that was um, good, man, that was that was really good. Yeah. Um, wash your face. I'm kidding. That Rachel Hollis girl. Book. Wash your face. <laughs> girl. Yeah. Wash your face. Yeah. That's uh, no. Rachel Hollis book. No, no. I, I bring her up because she knocked me off of the last list. Mm. And it was uh, that thing was fucking massive. And she's already got another one out. Uh, the last great book that I have read me personally was probably when we were doing research for Matt, I would say it was uh, 13 hours. I really liked that. Um, it was probably one of the last great ones I got to sit down and read. Yeah, yeah. About the Benghazi thing, yeah. Correct. Um, <clears throat> we... I, don't, I, don't, I don't read books. I, uh, like, if someone asked who, I was just on a show and they asked me, like, what, how often do I read? I'm like, I, I literally never read books. And I should read more, but I do uh, audiobooks. Like, oh, that's yeah. That's my thing. I'm on, strictly on, on Audible. Five, now. Yeah. It's, I, it's the way to go. Yeah, yeah. Because, me and I'm sure you guys do being so fucking busy in life. Like I don't have three hours to focus on one thing. Like I better be efficient, optimizing my life. But mm -hmm. like if I'm 
hitting the bag or doing my cardio work, then that's a perfect opportunity to knock out, you know, two chapters uh, of an audio book or podcast. That's in, like at least information. I can learn big words, you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, I take that back. There was a guest on named Rizvan Verk. He was an MIT uh, oh, professor the fucking, who yeah, wrote yeah, the yeah. simulation yeah. hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I read that and that was really good. That is there good was book. no audible for that. Yeah, but, you, but you're right. It's, it's a, it's an audible world right now where everybody's listening to things and uh, that's the biggest, you know, argument we get about the podcast is like, hey, man, I wish these were longer. Well, now you have a, a, a seven and a half hour book uh, of mats that you can go and listen to. So uh, if you want the longer version, get the audible. Book. And we're also I, I will doing. Say, go, go ahead, ahead Matt. Now you go ahead. Oh, I say that I will say the problem with like uh, audio books is like once in a while you're here like like. Calvastavian and you're like what the fuck did that dude just say you didn't like you don't even know the word but like you just pass it so you're like I guess I'm not gonna know what that sentence put together means like at least in a book you can google it you know but yeah well the good thing with audible is they have something called whisper sync so you can buy the the digital version of the book correct and the audible and it follows along in both so if I'm reading Ah. it yeah it's awesome if I'm reading it and wherever I stop reading it'll pick back up in the audiobook and vice versa yeah. The more you know. Yeah. yeah it's wow. rad as fuck. And the more you know about that, too, is if you buy the Audible, they give you the Kindle version for like $2 extra. Oh, yeah. It's so like, that way it's, you can follow along. Yep. Yeah. So that way you, you're not a full, a full on dummy. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be able to. Dummy. So I used to read, uh, I used to get all of Christopher Hitchens' books on Audible. Mm-hmm. But as you know, he talks like he, well, he talked like he's got marbles in his fucking mouth with that thick British accent. I couldn't understand any of it. Yeah, but I love his book. So I, every now and again, I had to go look some shit up. Like, what the fuck did this asshole just say? <laughs> well, you don't have to but do that d- with maths. No. Do, do you guys follow hockey? You guys are sports guys. Yeah, you, yeah. Like, you guys, you like the sports. Okay. Um, I have to say this. Went out to Brent Burns' ranch. Uh, plays for the San Jose Sharks. Yep. What a fucking phenomenal individual that guy is. I've met <laughs> him three times now and you know we've hung out at our ranch and all that and he invited me up to his ranch and his wife made this baller ass like pork and peaches dinner and like we went out and ran night vision and ran around with guns like the guy is so freaking cool man so i just want to get a shout out to him how yeah. did that come about uh we're just homies uh so we're he lives in fredericksburg um area ish uh obviously not gonna say exactly where he lives but sure he it's like an hour ish from my house and so he was like dude come out for dinner and we'll run around and look at animals and he's got this epic ranch and his family's phenomenal so it's super cool that's awesome Because you know me i'm a fucking hillbilly i love that shit yeah and i'm I'm sure this will open up a lot of doors to meet like really cool weird oddly famous people where it's just like hey man you want to just come over and shoot some shit because after you put your life story out there everybody feels like they know you I, I presume. I mean, I don't fucking fall into that celebrity shit. I would say 95% of the celebrities I meet, I can't fucking stand because they're on some pedestal of like, yeah, people just don't know me. I'm an artist. I'm so great. And you're like, go fuck yourself. But then you have <laughs> right. a guy like Brent who's been in the NHL for like 15 fucking years and you meet him and you would think he's just like, he's a construction worker. Like he wears like poor man's clothes, like the nicest guy ever, but his, you know, competitiveness in, 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 the NHL is just phenomenal. So those are the people I like that are hyper successful, but then humble, like just normal fucking dudes. He's a very American Canadian. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. I, I made that joke to his wife. I was like, what the fuck? He's Canadian. And he's like a Texan. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I told him he's moving to Texas with me. I guess his wife's from like uh, Texas. So <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, look, we, we, as always, Matt, we got some sponsors who put this whole shit wagon on the air. Since we oh. will be out uh, in Bernie, Texas for the opening of, of Black Rifle, why don't you tell us about your company and what you got going on with it right now? Yeah, Black Rifle Coffee, the greatest, greatest? Wow, yes. That's yeah. not a real word. I need to read more books, apparently. Like we're <laughs> No, it's it's everybody probably knows Black Rifle, but it's the uh, the greatest coffee company out there, man. We we focus on quality first, and then transparent with our, our brand and mission statement, and we give a fuck ton back to the community. And we're out here just a bunch of knuckle draggers that used to carry a gun for a living, trying to uh, pave the way in entrepreneurship and show people that they can be successful in their own right, and give you the best cup of coffee ever um, straight to your door. And the best part about that is the coffee club, as you guys know. Sign up once, you get discounted rates, you get discounted everything from. Uh, other vendors we love and first look at all new products it's a phenomenal program and i'm on it twice and i own the goddamn thing so yeah uh type in the promo code drinking bros 20 and uh a lot of people uh, were angry 
that they couldn't get the board shorts early when those kept popping up online. It's like, look, man, you got to join the coffee club of the month. You want the cool shit first, you know? Yeah, because sometimes we run like 500 units of, of small stuff and uh, they'll sell out just in the club. So that's why you got to be a club member. You get all the cool shit. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. Next up, we got ghostbed.com. <laughs> Sleep so good, it's scary. People miss your ghost yeah, on the show. I was show. just going to say that. <laughs> ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros will give you all your mattress needs uh i will say i don't even get a scent of this anymore because i don't work for drinking bros but that i have two ghost beds and they're phenomenal beds and their pillows are even fucking better the so best I'm, I, endorsed by me for sure yes and the the best in the biz at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros they have 15 percent off button at the bottom of the page for anybody who's military or first responder Click it. That is a fucking huge savings on everything they have there. And that is including the adjustable bases. Um, yeah, because beds are fucking expensive. I bro. know, man. I know. Uh, but we got everybody hooked on these. And uh, look, we wouldn't ask you to buy something of this price if it wasn't the best in the fucking business. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. And- th- Go ahead. You should start a new thing. I'm just interrupting today. You should, you should start a camp campaign called Fuck on the Bed We Fuck on because I've had a lot of sex in a ghost bed. Yeah, mm. I like that. Fuck on the bed we fuck on. Uh, right. Uh, R- R- Roman ED is also a sponsor, so you can, you can pop a pill and then fuck on the bed we fuck on. <laughs> at ghost- is that a dick pill? Oh, yeah. We got the fucking boner <laughs> pills out now, brother. Oh, God. <laughs> Welcome to the good life. Welcome to the good life. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. As always, 36 months, pay as you go program, no interest. No one is doing that except for ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we've got boxofawesome.com. Have you heard of these guys, Matt? No, I'm like I'm intrigued because I don't know any of these sponsors other than Ghostbed, obviously. But yeah, uh, so of, is it just I'm I'm guessing like I'm very intuitive guy. It's a box full of awesome shit. It is, but it's you know that oh, that, no that, way. that bespoke company, right? Um, that, okay. that this bespoke, they're like they've got like the nicest shit in the world. Kind of like uh, like one of those nice airport stores where you're like, man, I can't really afford anything in there, but it looks fucking awesome. Mm. Uh, right. This you can actually afford, and they ship it to your house. It's forty five bucks a month. We got like fucking meat cleavers. We got uh, a casket to age whiskey in. A um, cask, a cask, not uh, a casket. Uh, you might. Yeah, be I was a like, casket. That's, are you aging dead people with <laughs> bourbon? Maybe, across? maybe you, f- you fill up a dead body with whiskey. Yeah, and then let it age for a little bit. Let it stink in your house. <laughs> um, no, but I get to I get like a dop kit. I get a fucking travel bag all for 45 bucks. You go on, you take a five question survey about who you are as a man. Um, and they'll tell you, look, if you're if you're a hipster, they're going to send you hipster shit. If you're a real fucking dude, you're going to get goddamn knives in the mail. That's the that's the thing. Is that the awkward thing when they switch up a package and I get like mustache wax and like fucking? Yes, it is. It, might, it means you answered a question wrong, and they're like, "Hey, man, maybe Oops. you you well, know less about yourself." Maybe you answered. And the I do question not want to right, talk though. shit about mustache mustache wax because people have dope mustaches are awesome. You had a fucking dope there. one for a while. Yeah, but that, I, I'm probably going to bring it back. But I was thinking about like going on all the national news cycles, and I was like, uh, probably shouldn't have like a fucking Wyatt or mustache. Yeah. I mean, I should, right? But you know, you got to be a brand ambassador sometimes. You do, you do. But uh, go to boxofawesome.com, promo code Drinking Bros off the first box. Last but not least, expressvpn.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Protect your shit. Uh, there's crypto pirates out there that are worse than the Somali pirates in uh, the Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, and they could be wearing blackface, which is super offensive. Yeah, so. and stealing oh. all of your bank accounts. Yeah, both of those things. I'm all about that VPN life. You, you are, are proxy, aren't you? You gotta, you gotta have that proxy server, bro. Oh yeah, we've Matt and I've used those overseas to look at some questionable material. Oh, of course. On Everybody Nipper knows if you're in the Nipper. middle, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't even Google fucking, like, you know, fuck GIF and then yeah, anything pop up. Nothing. So you're working that, like, nine angle VPN to get a proxy server in, like, you know, wherever. And yep. like, okay, I got the porn. <laughs> Is that true? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, we, yeah. we used yeah, to use, uh, me and my company commander back in the day used to have a, a fucking VPN account that we all used for social. I mean, like, you can't get on social media or anything. Oh, so we were, we were using it for everything back then. Mostly porn, though. Well, I will say this, because somebody said you if you use expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros, you can watch porn at work. Is that true? Um, I'm not yeah. saying you should. 
<laughs> but you can. Just saying you, you, can. you can. Yeah. It you gives can. you the, it gives you the afternoon option. Go to yeah. Express. But you, you have to know that whoever your IT specialist is, or if you have um, whoever's in charge, some people will actually know if you're running a VPN, and they'll single you out. And I, that happened to me once with the agency. And the dude was really cool and liked me, but he's like, hey, man, you know it's against VPN rules to have, like, oh, shit, okay, my bad. Really? I guess I'm, j- I guess I'm jacking off to the mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to ExpressVPN forward slash Drinking Bros today. Going stale fish. Seven bucks a month, and uh, if you sign up for a year, you get three for free. Uh, we all have it. Runs in the background of our uh, hard top, desktop, fucking phones, iPads. You name it. We got some questions from the audience for you, Matt, about uh, th- the whole process of your book tour. Uh, and I've been drinking whiskey like heavy here, so I'm probably going to be a little tipsy by the end of great. the Great. Then so. the, the first one, then, we're, it's going to require your honesty because you're the only one that's met her. Uh, we got a question here that said, how hot is Tommy Lahren in real life? And is, is she worth the hype that everybody thinks? Um, so I'm going to be political in my response. I will say... <laughs> Tommy is, you know, attractiveness is a subjective statement. So it's completely based on what you think attractiveness is. She is, to me, is not a bad looking. She's very, just like she looks on camera, is very similar in real life. And what I will say about Tommy is I was thoroughly impressed with the interview that she gave me on No Interruptions. She was very fair and easygoing. And, you know, all you see about one person is their heightened sense of, um, politics and all of that but getting to know her just as a person was absolutely refreshing and she was she was super cool and i'm and and yeah i I was impressed because you see them on fox and all the other things are like this 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 you're like oh man are you just gonna yell at me all day and then you like you run into them in real life like oh you're actually fucking cool i could share a beer with you so oh cool cool so she was down like that she seems it man i felt cool she was cool I i follow her on instagram and i was like yeah she's like a manhattan beach girl like uh she seems like she's out she does normal shit and she's fun yeah, um, she seems cool. And, and, and a lot of hate she got, she handles it really well. She's like, she'll walk down the street and get, like, shit thrown at her and stuff. I'm like, damn, I feel bad for you, dude. Are you serious? So, well, dude, I mean, come on. Anybody on the political spectrum that's hyper right or hyper left, you're going to have, you know, shit. A lot of outreach, I guess, would be the way of saying that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next question. Did you read the Fox News article regarding the Tommy Lahren thing? That It used one yes. shitty line, but it was actually— it was. It, it was a clickbait title. You're talking about um, yes. What was the what was the line? A uh, uh, veteran trying to cash ar- in army, off of something. It was or- ar- no, it was army ranger and veteran entrepreneur responds to allegations of him saying profiting off of war and tragedy. Yes, that's it. Recollect that. Um, yeah, uh, I, I thought that was really shitty that, because it was a great was interview shitty. and it had nothing it to do with that. That. To- to be expected, they're using my likeness, obviously, to get clickbait, and I put it out there. It's a fucking clickbait title, and I'll say that to the producers at Fox, even though everybody at Fox was insanely nice and welcoming to me, so I have to thank them for that. And it is what it is, and, and, and that's, that's one of those things where it's like you can read the title, but if you actually go and listen to the content involved and the discussion involved, it's completely different. And that whole title was based off of a question that Tommy asked me in a very reverent way. She said, hey, what's your response to a lot of – people that say veterans that start up veteran owned businesses are looked in the light of them, you know, profiting off of their service. And I think my response was something in the regard of, you know, you went to Harvard university, that's obviously going to influence in you and your business acumen going forward. And just like being a veteran should, we're not, I'm not like, you know, using everything as a veteran to go forward, but that that's something that I lived, you know, in carrying a gun professionally for 10 years, that's a part of me. It's who I am. So I have to be proud of that. And the, the, the worst thing we could ever do is tell veterans and people that serve their communities that you can't talk about that stuff. You can't compartmentalize all that experience. You have to use it to go forward and be successful in your next chapter in life. Yeah, and that was uh, – because when I saw that article, obviously it was shared a bunch of times. And people – you know, look, everybody came to your defense and was like, fuck you. Matt Best is – you know, and, and – Black Rifle and Drinking Bros have done more for, you know, the veteran community than anyone. Why use that title? Um, and uh, I just thought that, that was the only one that, that I thought was really shitty. And they I was just like, want to play well, the but, us but, versus but, them bullshit. That's all it is. Yeah. And really, there's nothing in our brain that that, that resonates with. We, we never, but, but we here, never look, think of that as us versus them. But let's challenge thought here, guys, right? So 
If people take the actual effort to listen to the interview based off of a clickbait title, then they, there might be some more, more awareness about pro veteran entrepreneurship. Whereas if they said successful Matt best crushes everything in life or whatever the fuck they could say, people are probably not going to click on that, but they see that. And then hopefully that message and that content involved in that could be the good thing to happen. So maybe there is some silver lining that with a fucking kind of weird, awkward, shitty title, people actually got to listen to the content. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're, you're always a glass half full type of guy. And that's fuck the honest to God's truth, man. Um, uh, next up, uh, what was it like meeting Sean Hannity? How is he behind the scenes? <laughs> I mean, I've met Hannity like seven times. So, uh, well, the, we, po Again, we posted like, the picture in drinking bros. So everybody yeah, was like, yeah. no way we didn't know. Like y y what's he, what's his story behind the scenes? Dude, I like, I like Hannity. He was super busy and was dealing with some stuff this time. But uh, my previous engagements with him have been nothing but positive. He is like a fucking massive veteran and military supporter. The guy like goes out of his way to support people. And, you know, I'm not a political guy. So like whatever pol political conversation goes on, I'm not a part of. But I will say the dude's got a really good heart and he has been absolutely amazing to us. And I love Hannity. Like, we'll we'll use him as a sponsor for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I've gotten a lot of hate that back. Like, oh, you fucking support Sean Hannity. I'll fucking fuck your company. I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, the guy's supporting a veteran-owned, veteran-operated business and caring about people that went and fucking fought a war and saw people die. Like, he's good in my book when it comes to that, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, he just seems like a cool, like, fucking down-to-earth dude. Because the, the, the picture was, uh, it looked like he was just hanging out in a t-shirt, too. Just chilling. I was like, oh, shit. I don't think I've dude, seen him outside of a suit. And he does a shit ton of mixed martial arts. He's like, dude, you got to come by and do some Aikido in my fucking house. I'm like, whoa, you're crazy awesome, dude. <laughs> really? Yeah, dude. He does, like, mixed martial arts and all this shit, man. Yeah, he's a cool dude. <laughs> I, I actually know some people uh, that are pretty far left that have worked for him in production up in New York before. And even they say that he's a super nice guy. It's kind of weird. They're like, yeah, he's not like his on-camera persona in real life at all. That's funny, man. Yeah. I, I remember when Marcus Luttrell was on the show and we were asking him who's, who's a surprising friend. He said An Anderson Cooper from CNN and uh, you know shit man there is you're able to separate job and people and, and all that other shit uh, as long as you're a cool guy in real life so uh, it's, to well, yeah, it's and totally possible that, like, and everybody can have disagreeing beliefs it's about like sustaining and maintaining your perspective on life and hopefully influencing people to think about the goodness that you have in your own heart and I mean, I'm, I'm probably hopefully going to do this with my media tour, but like there's a lot of late night shows that we have probes out that are interested in having me on. And while we might disagree on a lot of things like firearms and politics, at least we can come together and have a fun, entertaining moment together. You know, uh, that's actually the next question. Uh, somebody asked if Matt Best was going to be on Trevor Noah and do The Daily Show. Oh, shit. Whew. I'll go on Trevor. I mean, that would be a, a, a very probably heightened, aggressive uh, interview. I'd rather go on like Fallon because then we could like hit each other with eggs and shit and have fun. Right. But It'd Trevor be... Noah, I mean, I don't know if you saw the one with Tommy and him, but that one went fucking sideways real quick. And not that I'm a political commentator, but it yeah. did. And that the interesting thing about it was uh, they later aired an unedited version of their conversation that went it would probably around 35 minutes and you can find it out there on like YouTube and it was actually very thoughtful the problem was you have to cut it down to an eight minute segment for the daily show yep. and they fucking threw her under the bus on that and uh, I actually thought it seemed like Trevor Noah was a pretty reasonable dude uh, to her for that 35 minutes but that eight minute segment their producer cut was shit to me uh, but I think you I think you'd be great on there, actually, if there's one person who could speak about, you know, especially the with the recent most recent shooting in Odessa and all that stuff like I think it would be you and, and it would be really interesting to see you go on that show, I think. I don't know about that statement, but I, I will say I will never turn down an opportunity to share my message and what I believe in as far as like our community and where I, I want to take my own personal life and my mission. So. I mean, I'll, I'll fucking go on the view. Like, I don't care. People can attack me all day, but I'm just going to kill them with kindness. Like, and that's what I have to do in this world. Like a bunch of fucking assholes, you know? <laughs> so I'm just going to be, I'm going to be cool me, man. Yeah. And, and that's not, I'm not saying like, I don't know how to hurt people. Like I got a fucking light switch. Like I obviously fucking tram way known how to shoot fucking people in the face to sound douchey, but like, you know, I'm here to just spread some love and, and, and build the community. That's it. Uh, next question, Aubrey Marcus, did you, did Matt name the coffee? Fuck. Yeah. Was that your idea? Or was that, Mar was that Mark your Aubrey's Marcus Aubrey <laughs> from on it? Aubrey Jesus. Marcus. Yeah. It's a lot of Aubrey words. Ah, 
<laughs> Look, I've Man, been drinking. And you're, and you're a New York Times bestselling author? Uh, <laughs> here, here's what happened. Oh, let's be real about it. Because it's on, it's on camera right here. Uh, Kill Cliff. No, no, I'll, I'll be totally real about it. Kill Cliff came out with a can of CBD. Uh, yeah. Dead serious. KillCliffCBD.com. They're a new sponsor. Um, it is 25 milligrams in a can. And holy shit, do you feel relaxed yeah, on this best. goddamn shit? Um, I, they're, they're supposed to send me some, actually. I, I feel it kicking in. Problem was, so they were on the sh they were on the show, and and their sponsor they sold out in like what forty eight hours. I think it was like shit? twelve seconds. I don't know. If you have gone. this, you're the most relaxed you'll ever be in your entire life. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, yes. it's really good. Did you come up with fuck yeah coffee? Was that you? Oh man, I can't I can't take sole credit for that. I think what happened we it was I believe and I don't really remember it was Aubrey, us and. Evan on the phone and we were all talking about what we should name the coffee and we're like fuck yeah dude we're so excited about this and we all kept saying fuck yeah and then I think Aubrey was probably the one like should we just call it fuck yeah and we're like fuck yeah and and Dan maybe you have some insight because you were part of that deal back in the day but it, it's that was a year ago so I forget but that's one of those things man I never no one like ever takes credit for one individual thing in the company it's just like a conglomeration of very talented creative people and then we find the best idea and run with that yeah, so you guys, what do you guys go through? God, with the whole I sound team? like a politician the way no, I it's talk like, these uh, days. What the fuck? It's, You're too God. used to other interviews. It's fucking drinking bros, it's, man. It's like everybody oh, starts throwing out random ideas, and then somebody says, yeah, that sounds good, and somebody adds 20 more percent to it, and we're like, oh, shit, yep. that's it right there. That's, I like the bag, too. Goes. Who did the bag? The bag is cool. That was all uh, on it, to be honest with you, because we, they were talking about, we're joking about, you know, that 80s, 90s retro kind of vibe. And they came back, and I said that on Aubrey's podcast. I was like, that's probably the first thing that's come across the brand department that I run that I've been like, oh, we don't really need to change anything on that. That's fucking awesome. It's fuck yeah. So, yeah, there's a good chance and that, and Aubrey was on ayahuasca well. when he came up with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good chance. Maybe dope ass commercials for that shit, too. Like oh, yeah. Old skateboard commercials. It's rad. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen them. Where, where, are they online? Yeah. They're, uh, they're on, on it, yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I'll check it out. See? Uh, you fucking said it. Exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm already saying the brand already. Yep. Um, that's great. And what do you, where do you buy that? Off a of Black Rifle? Uh, right now on, on it. They have that in the MCT oil, which is their only mocha MCT oil, which is their best flavor. Aubrey said it himself. And so, yeah. My, Jesse loves that shit. My wife loves that shit. Um, <laughs> that's rad. That's fucking awesome. Uh, next question. What was it like going on Fighter and the Kid? Uh, you were actually on there before, too, uh, um, once before. Uh, how, are yeah, those guys, there... how are those guys in real life was the question. Oh, well, Shab and I are homies, man. Um, you know, Shab, Shab is Shab. I know he gets a lot of back and forth the guy's a good dude he sometimes you just probably shouldn't talk about things he doesn't know like firearms um but i love brennan to death we obviously do co uh, coffee with him through black rifle coffee and brian callen man i can't speak highly of that guy that he's so intelligent so funny fucking awesome i mean i love those guys so it was a pleasure having me on the podcast and i know some people were like giving them shit for not letting me talk as much but you know i probably talk too much on drinking bros so uh, <laughs> no yeah. what well, yeah it's, I, I i saw that but it's like dude you're it's three fast funny guys having a conversation like yeah it happens you know yeah i it was a good show man i'd be back there on there anytime and um and and honestly i i like shab's comedy i went to see him in austin like seven months ago he caught me some tickets and I wasn't sure how he's going to be. I'm like, oh, it's your friend. You hope he's funny. And it was, it was for me. It was a, it was a really uh, funny show. So I enjoyed the shit out of it. Yeah, he's do, he's doing a lot of fuck, man. A lot of dates around the country right now. Uh, he just did a, a Showtime special. Yeah, uh, one hour I Showtime special. Yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, you guys, it, we're hanging out with Dan Crenshaw. What is Dan Crenshaw like in real life? Uh, I can't answer that question because I didn't go up there. I had other media stuff that I was doing. So Jared. Oh, you're Adam out of that one. Went. All right. Yeah, I didn't get lunch. I heard Dan's a great guy. I know some people dispute certain political things that he discusses. Uh, and, and I could probably have my own opinion as well. But no, I haven't met him. Uh, I heard he's a really cool dude, though. So Here, here's here's a question that I have about that, because I saw Evan hit him with the coffee stamp. What the fuck is going on with Evan and this goddamn coffee stamp? First of all, who got it for him? Was it him? And if so, yeah, of course he who, bought that shit. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like attacking people. It's like old school fucking uh, like Bam Margera style with the hair clippers. Yeah, but he's sneaking up on people and stamping the word coffee on their neck and head. <laughs> 
<laughs> he did it to Dan Crenshaw? He did it on his hand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. Like, you know he's an elected member of Congress, Evan. He's like, Which eh, hand did he do it on? Because he, he probably wouldn't see it if it was on the other one, right? <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, he's, he's cool Jesus. like that. He's cool like that. He was wearing sunglasses with Jared. Um, I think that's why people ask. Because uh, there was a cool picture with him and Jared, and it was just like, man, th- it, he seems like a good guy. Uh, Graham Allen was on the show, and he, sa- he also said Dan Crenshaw was yeah. a pretty good guy as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so people were asking about that. And then uh, the last question was, because uh, everybody's asking this, um, how can other people franchise a Black Rifle coffee, and are you doing that? Yes. Uh, the franchise program, and I know, thank you for being patient, people. Uh, you know, Tom Davin, um, our co-CEO, has re- built the model. We have the model. And now we're doing a couple rollouts to see how it works and because we want to set people up for success. So I know there's been discussion about the Bernie Texas location, which is actually not a franchise. That is a licensing agreement as far as the brand goes, which opens September 28th in Bernie, Texas, which is between kind of Austin and San Antonio. Welcome to come down. It'll be a party. It'll be fun. Uh, Ross and Dan will be there. Yep. Um, we'll, we'll be doing live We're closing down there. the whole street. Yeah. yeah we're a cl- fucking party. Yeah. Out there, man. Yeah. They're closing down the street for it. So it, it'll be a blast. Come on out. Yeah, like, there's gonna be like fucking SWAT cars out there, and all these like I think like, a tank is gonna be there and shit. Like, let's they're ta- bringing out the not, let's, not to like protect anything, just no, just for, for fun. fucking entertainment. Yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah. taser each other. Do you want to? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll get tased live on air. <laughs> what, what, what are Will we? You, we talk. Will you get tased? Really? Yeah. Is it the one Prongs? with the hooks or the one with the uh, with the hooks? What's the what, yeah, what's dr- so what's the difference? Explain it to me. Because a I've, stun gun is the one with the arc. Right, and, and I've been well, st- I've been stunned with one. That's of those. not a stun gun; it's still a taser. I was a goddamn taser instructor. I, no, yeah, but ta- really? no, taser stands for Thomas A. Swift electric rifle. Okay, that's what it stands for. It's that's the one with the prongs. Uh, yep. But yeah, they're both technically tasers. They just deliver a lot of electricity into your body. How does the hooks? Uh, so the hooks leave a you mark? have a cartridge, right? If you take the cartridge off, you have it's called a drive a dry stun. Yeah. drive stun. One of those two. I, I'm, yeah, those I'm are old. Those are pretty fun. But those hurt. It's just pain compliance, essentially. And But, dude, like, I've used, we used to shock each other all the fucking time with those. That's too easy. If you get pronged, anybody that's been tased knows it's it locks up your muscular system. So the better separation you have in the prongs, yeah. it shoots an electric current through that, which locks up your whole muscles. And you can't do anything. And it's hyper painful. And you tend to make, like, <laughs> yeah. sounds and some weird shit. Yeah, it's so. not fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's, definitely not doing that. It's uh, Well, the way I did it in training... But I, I've never actually been shot with one because you need an EMT on, on deck because you got to, like, pull the fucking... It's like a little... It's a straight fish hook, basically. I mean, I got you. Oof. I used to be an EMT. Just I let my national registry explain. Oh, well, so just... That's cool. <laughs> get a pair of pliers. It's fine. Uh, yeah, you just rip it out. You're but what, what we did was we would deploy the, the cables and then attach one to your collar and one to your belt. Okay. And then just fucking light your ass up, right? <laughs> so you want to get into the two muscle groups. It is the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. But when it's over, it's immediately done. Like, I didn't feel anything afterwards. So it's Really? Not, yeah. And how do, they, how do they take the hooks out? With pliers? Uh, usually uh, an EMT takes it out with pliers. Oof. Yeah, no That's, thanks. We're going to be opening up a coffee store. I don't want to. Well, you already agreed to it, bitch. So it's too late now. No, I mean, I'll go with the, the classic taser. You can just run up, you know. And just... Well, Matt's right, though. In, the, in infantry team rooms across America right now, people are getting tased <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. Just because it's fun and we're bored <laughs> that's a real thing they were doing look they were doing it on jackass as well yeah. um, those tasers are always fun for like fucking 15 minutes and then you keep trying to like lay down and someone tases yeah. you in the back of the neck and then you're just like i'm gonna start fucking fist fighting people if you touch me with that thing yep. <laughs> uh are you hey are you done with the tour now that, that was uh, that was another one sorry a bonus question are, are you all done or are they lining up more stuff uh, not through the publisher right now, but um, my goal is to do some epic, um, probably incorporate Drinking Bros, Black Rifle Coffee, and hit some really cool places across the nation and do book signings and, and make it more entertainment-based rather than just sitting in line for three hours to get a, a photo and a signature. So like, I'm planning to do one in Savannah, Georgia, down at Nine Line and, and some other place. I think uh, Tactical Shit wants to do one. So we'll, we'll kind of structure it around that no we should do the last location we should you should come out to uh army navy in philly with us and oh do it there. yes 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 the army sure. navy game man that'd be a blast i think that's like december 6th or 7th or some shit yeah yeah i'll say i'm gonna go and then cancel last minute like i always do <laughs> <laughs> that's right you were supposed to come to army navy last year 
I was. I was. It was. It was 18 degrees. Jared. Oh, it was rough. Jared was able to make it through the show, and then uh, he hightailed it out of there. He was like, "This is way too fucking cold." And I think you and I left like midway through the second quarter because it was the most boring bullshit I've ever seen in my life, and we were freezing to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. The game. The game was great. Seeing all that up close and personal was wild, and. Uh, and I, I think, didn't they induct like people in like some... There were some uh, people inducted in. The president was there. I think Mattis was there too. Wasn't yeah, Mattis it? was yeah. there as well. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that's the other thing, Matt, is, is your, I think your book also came out at the perfect time. Because uh, like I told you, they'll spring like these last minute Washington books on you and you're, you're, you'll get fucked by it. Did you see Mattis has a book coming out? Uh, yeah, no, I did. It, what, what is it called? Um, um, I f- man, I, f- I forget. It's like a really like professional, like, you know, it's amazing. Not, it's not called murdering hippies. No, it that's... should be. Um, it should be. But I he- thought it came out already. Did it not? It might. It, I think it might be tomorrow actually. And okay. uh, when I saw that, I was like, "Ooh, thank God we weren't up against that one." Because... It's a call sign chaos. Learning to lead. Co- yep, call sign chaos. There it is. Yeah, and it it actually comes out tomorrow. So. Um, man, that would have, yeah. And you can't fuck with Mattis, dude. Like I'm a nobody compared to him. Yeah. He just knocked you off of, uh, <laughs> speaking of which, I just pulled it up on Amazon. He knocked you off of all every military category with that one. Um, Boom. Yeah. Go Mattis. I'm cool with that. I'm yeah. sure it's a good story. I'm sure, man. I'll be curious what he has to say about working with Trump and all those guys. Um, yeah. Cause you know, from what I heard, he pretty much keeps to himself. I'm surprised he has a book actually. I don't, I don't know, you know man. That's, that's, that's a cool thing to do these days, apparently. You it know, is. I'm not, I'm not a Navy SEAL, and I wrote a book and uh, made a movie. So, fucking A. Anything's possible. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Call, what, was this call sign chaos? Yeah. Was it really? Oh, yeah. Man. He doesn't fuck around, man. Like, all the, he, he's, like, uh, he's like Chesty Puller. Like, all the stories you hear about him, they're Marie, like uh, our buddy um, uh, Patch. He's, he worked on his PSD for a while. Like, all the stories you hear about that guy are true. He's a legit guy. He's a, they call him the warrior monk. For a reason this will be the next one then um i bet he doesn't do his own audiobook though <laughs> no. <laughs> no he should definitely get, he should not get in general mattis to do that bro. who should he get to do the audiobook like eddie murphy or something could you imagine it would be so much funnier <laughs> instead of going well, what if i read it like maybe i'll be, i'll have a career in narrating like epic iconic figures in our generation there you go. and i'll read them in a deadpool sarcastic matt best fucking douchebag tone oh could you imagine as i dude? told president trump i killed all the isis <laughs> <laughs> Could I guarantee. You imagine? I guarantee you. There. I guarantee you. He's been in very professional meetings, and he's and he's probably uttered something to the effect of, "Why don't we just kill these motherfuckers?" I guarantee you, based on what I've heard about him from people that have worked closely with him, I yep. guarantee you, he said that behind closed doors. I would love That's, to see that. You know what that statement reminds me of, um, Dan? Is like when you're probing your chick or your wife. You're like, I mean, we could have a threesome <laughs> you're like, where you want to do it, right? But like, you you just don't want to like you say it in that circuit. Like, I mean, we could. We could just kill him. Yeah, Dude, can, we can't do can, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I, I was like just, it was hyperbole. I was just, you know, making a, but but seriously, like in a fantasy, think about it. It might be fun. Yeah. It might be fun. might be fun. I can, see, I can see Mattis in a meeting, and he's trying to downplay how badly he wants to kill everything. He's just like, oh, yeah, I guess, exactly. yeah, I guess we could do that. I mean, shit. How many, he's like, how and many, then we could just go in and slaughter <laughs> the <laughs> mission statement and win the hearts and minds of everybody. Like, how, like, how many, Matt, how many bombs huh? have we got? How many bombs? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that should be enough. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, it should yeah. be fine. We're gonna drop six thousand bombs on this one square yeah. mile. <laughs> wait, who's in charge? I, wait, I am the sec def. So, how many uh, bombers do we have? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oof. Uh, we're, we're at the point in the show where we have the drinking bro of the week. Uh, anybody you would like to give the drinking bro of the week to, Matt Best, now that you were number one in the world? I am going to give it to my mother. Yay. That's and that awesome. that wasn't planned. No, I do want to say this. Like, uh, it, it's been crazy, man. My mom is a hyper conservative um, woman, and she's been a good mom for sure. And she has put up with my shit publicly and supports me especially in the release of this book and i've seen her be defensive to other people it's amazing so the fact that she supports my uh journey unconditionally even though i know it goes against a lot of her belief systems as far as the amount that i use the word fuck 
and the amount that I've been an active shooter with my penis in women's vaginas <laughs> um, and, and publicly narrated that for the world to see forever. I, uh, she is a hero in my book, and um, I love that we can see past the differences in our growing up and lifestyles and come together as a family. And I wish more people had the ability to, to do that. Um, so cheers to you, Mom. I love you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to steal that active shooter line with your penis um, <laughs> and, and not give you any credit for it. I'm, Perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm taking that forever. Um, and then lastly, man, we, we said, dude, if, if, if we hit number one, we, we'd let you play your favorite song of all time at the end of the show. What is it? You got one, one choice. It was a Stevie Ray Vaughan song, wasn't it? Yeah, of course. Stevie Ray Vaughan, Little Wing. It is my favorite song of all time. There's no lyrics. But I advise you, I, this wasn't planned, I'm just being quick, but uh, I advise you to maybe smoke some weed or take a nice shot of whiskey, sit on the couch and have seven or six to eight minutes, whatever it is, of absolute iconic uh, creative justice. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. So we're going to play that right now. Uh, Matt, thanks for uh, letting me help you out with this. It's been a fucking blast, man. And uh, look, we'll see how far this thing goes, man. No, and I'll give a thanks to you guys, man. Ross, thank you so much for your process and, and you know all the time we took writing the initial manuscript and all the hours we spent together and then the refining process. You were sending email every six, single week to the DOD. Dan, thank you so much for reading my book in a very thoughtful way and giving me productive feedback. So you guys are great. Um, keep doing what you're doing. I know you're an inspiration to a lot. So fuck yeah, guys. Hey, we love you. Yeah, we love you, buddy. We'll see you in uh, two weeks on the cruise and then uh, three weeks on uh, the opening at Black Rifle. So come out to, to Bernie, Texas and join us. Uh, we're going to play it out with Stevie Ray Vaughan, Little Wayne.